Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Whiskey Neat, spirited conversations with interesting people. I am your host, Christopher Hart. Um, man, you know, I, I, the, the repeat guest thing is, is fun for me because one, you know, the first time you have someone on, you, there's, there's a little nervousness of not knowing these people. And then the second time you have them on, it's a little bit, it's more friendly, like you, you know them a little better. So uh, this week we went up to Dallas and we went up to uh, Fan Expo in Dallas. Great event. I got to tell you, the vocal group, uh, Dana Cobb, their, their entire PR team uh, are absolutely incredible. And we were slated to interview both Katie Sackoff, the Star Wars. There's a lot about to happen with Star Wars, and uh, the Trailer Park Boys. And unfortunately, uh, the Trailer Park Boys had to cancel last minute. We had a little bit of a, a timing issue. Those events are pretty hectic and always full of surprises. However, uh, I did get to sit down with Katie Sackoff. We, we got to play catch up. Usually when someone does the show, they're here to promote something. And Katie wasn't we came to promote parenthood she's uh last time she was on the show she was just engaged to her fiance robin gadsby and since then she's gotten married and had a baby uh, and as many of you know katie uh has been a big uh, proponent of fighting cancer for many years since she had uh cancer at a young age and uh they used a surrogate had uh, a beautiful baby girl and we sat down for about an hour and just we had a few drinks we played catch up we talked a little bit about star wars but more than anything we talked about her foray for foray in my head i want to say foyer that's a room in your house uh her foyer in uh into parent <laughs> So uh, we we had a little Waterford. Uh, we 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 actually brought the prideful goat. We didn't get to it. Speaking of which, uh, at Fan Expo, I was about to say we we I, I love when we get to travel. We get to try sushi in, in new markets, new places. And so in Dallas, all I did was spend the day kind of looking for fun food and fun sushi in the area, which reminded me of Uchiko, who had just opened here in Houston. Uh, and we went and checked them out. It was an incredible sushi spot. Uchi has always been a incredible sushi spot here in Houston. Uchi Ko, which I believe is related to Uchi, is uh, absolutely brilliant and fantastic. And I believe they have a, a, a branch of that up in the DFW area as well. Um, so I can't recommend them enough here in Houston to check them out. Real quick, uh, we have expanded Prideful Goat into Oklahoma. It is now available with premium brands, wines, and spirits. Uh, of course, Waterford, our uh, regular sponsor. Big shout out to Waterford. Waterford, we've talked about them for years. Uh, this one in particular, I started drinking before we filmed. We started filming uh, the Dunbell Edition 1.1, single farm, single origin, Irish single malt whiskey. The word "single" is mentioned so many times that it's on the box. They had to put a, a code in there. You go to the website glassrev.com/waterford. Uh, I mean, e everything you'd want to know about the product is available. The, the the seasonal cycle, the who the farmers were that raised the grains for this batch. It's in, it's an incredible, incredible Irish whiskey company, uh, Irish single malt whiskey company, and uh, I couldn't be happier with them, and I, I thank them again for their support. So uh, one last shout out to Fan Expo in Dallas. Uh, I just want to uh, thank everyone, uh, Dana and her team, again, for, for just being so incredible. Uh, without further ado, please welcome this week's guest, uh, best friend of mine, best parent friend of mine, uh, Katie Sackoff. Cheers. Katie, I don't think we've actually shaken hands yet. Can we shake hands? I uh, think we can. Yeah, I we think can. we can. Very <laughs> nice to meet you. Fully vaccinated. <laughs> Me too. Um, I mean, boosted everything. Uh, the whole nine I got yards. The whole nine, the I whole got, nine enchiladas. I got it all. And I tested positive for Christmas. You? Yeah. you know what? I keep knocking on wood because I haven't had it. And I've been with people in like a whole room when someone else has gotten or, you know, a bunch of people have had it and then I ha haven't gotten it. So I don't know. It's going to get me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, knowing you, you strike me as someone who's extremely athletic, who works out a lot. Plus, you've got I saw the sauna that you guys just built. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, if it does happen, it'll be it'll be a lot easier. It'll be mild. Uh, it was for us. It was very quick. Oh, good. Uh, the only thing that was weird was backache. I had a really? backache for like a couple of days. No, I still have my smell, sense of taste, which is important. Thank God. You know. Cheers. Um, I am. Um, I tend to think, though, that if it like m maybe we 
had it and just didn't test pot. I don't know. I don't know how I could possibly be in a room with everyone that gets it and not get it. You know what I mean? D yes, I do. Uh, we actually, I think every, it was kind of a running joke for a long time. People were saying, oh, I had it back in February, you know, when it first came out and uh -huh. it, it was nothing. And then I actually got it and I was like, yeah, I, was def I definitely did not have it before. Um, but yeah. yeah, it's it's one of those things that it actually, when I got it, it was kind of a sense of relief. Yeah, that's sort of how I would feel, I'd think. Cause it's sort of, you know, get it out of the way. Get out of the way. The only thing that makes me nervous, which by the way, I, I, we got to get into this and uh, I, I'm dying to talk to you about this. So the last time I talked to you, you weren't married yet. Mm. Uh, I've, I've actually talked to your husband a little bit online. I think he's <laughs> absolutely amazing. I know, it's um, the best decision I ever made. <laughs> he seems so great. And then also since the last time we talked, you became a mother. I did. I know. And I remember my my jaw dropping at some time around Christmas, seeing you had this beautiful baby girl. Mm hmm. Um. What's her name? Ginevra. Ginevra. Yeah, Ginevra Grace Gadsby. Uh, G G G. Uh huh. She's either gonna be like a professional athlete or a serial killer. Sure. But, like, sure. A three person. Uh, she's gonna three like names? carve her initials into people's scalps or something. I don't know. How, talk to me about it. I've got four myself, yeah. five and six, yeah. 16, 17, mm -hmm. uh, big, big girls and little kids. Uh, it's the most exhausting. I mean, I'm 34, I'm the same, I think I'm the same age as your husband. You're, and, you're like a year older, yeah. And, uh, but I, I look 40. Uh, <laughs> and it's four kids will do that to you. I, I, how are you sleeping? I'm so tired. <laughs> you're so tired. It's, I, I mean, you've been up since four today, right? I'm so tired. <laughs> you just start crying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're great. I didn't honestly think it was possible to be so tired and still function. Like there are days where I am like driving a car and I'm like, I feel like it says do not operate heavy machinery when you feel like this. Like just, you're just so tired all the time that you actually stop realizing how tired you are. I, my wife and I decided to have, uh, to do a second round. The, the, the two, the four kids are 10 years apart. Holy Hannah. And it got to a point where I remember I had to pull over on the side of the road just to, to take a nap because I was falling asleep behind the wheel. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's worse than drunk driving. So yeah. uh, we live kind of in the suburbs. So there was like this, this one spot. It would be like my nap spot on the way home from work. Your nap I'm just, spot. I was exhausted. I was exhausted. Yeah. The things that you realize, like I had thought ignorantly that my job had in some way prepared me for lack of sleep because I work crazy hours. They're inconsistent, long days, physical days, on your feet. Your brain is tired. You're memorizing dialogue. I honestly thought that I was like, I got this. I got this. Until my first 36 hours of not sleeping and then going to work with like monologues of dialogue and just standing in front of like the director with like my shoulders starting to shake and just like tears streaming down my face. And I'm like, I'm fine. I'm totally fine. I'm totally fine. I'm totally fine. I'm totally fine. And I was like, I'm so, I'm so tired. I'm so tired. I just, <laughs> like, just, I didn't, I just had no idea. I had no idea. It is, it is truly the, uh, the, gr the, the great greatest, equalizer. <laughs> the great equalizer. It's yeah. the most humbling thing I've ever done in my entire life. So. Uh, I've just realized something. I just finished my drink. I've realized I never poured you something. I'm so sorry. It's totally fine. Um, I, it's probably the most sober I'll be. <laughs> yeah. Irish thing. Well, I figured after today you deserve a drink. I do. Someone said to me, I'm so sorry. I hope at some point you get some sleep. And I said, I am sleeping in a hotel room without my six month old child. It's going to be great. Yes. <laughs> okay. The, uh, be great. one of the, I, I, I'm a very gregarious person, but the, mm -hmm. there's this aspect of travel where it isn't, I read a book today. Right, you read you know? a book? Yeah, like, like it was. Like you didn't listen to I, it on I, tape I, while you I, walked I mean, and some tried of to it, exercise. So, so, some, <laughs> some of it on tape on the way on the way to the hotel, but I actually sat down for two hours and I, I read, I was reading a book. And uh, uh, it's, it's like there's this dichotomy of like, I want to be around my family all the time, but it's actually nice to take two nights to come to Dallas in silence and to sleep yeah. in. And it's, it's fantastic. You have to, I, I have found that like you truly, it is so easy to lose yourself in your children and to lose your relationship in your children because Ooh. everything becomes about your child. Sure. And you realize that's all you talk about. It's all you think about. It's, it's literally like everything. 
you have to have those moments where you are being selfish and you're taking time for yourself. And I even said to my husband, maybe we should, you know, in October, like go to Mexico for two nights by ourselves. And we were both like, oh, can we do that? Like, I don't know, she, she won't even be a year old. And I was like, we have to do something. Like not, not because we're, our relationship is anything but sure. as beautiful Newly as it's wits, ever been. Right? Of course. Um, but you ha we have to. We have to do that. You have to remember that you need to be yourself first. And for me, being the strongest version of myself makes me the strongest parent I can be. Well, I've, I, this is always something I'm, I'm have, I've had trouble putting into words, but it is, to me, the most important part about being married. Mm. And that is, and, and hear me out, let me, I'm going to say it, and then let me shape it, uh, is you have to put your marriage first. And what I mean by that is, if, if we're stranded on an island and there's one piece of pizza left between all three of us, I'm not gonna take it. I know she's not gonna take it. We're gonna both equally be on the same page and give it to our child. Mm -hmm. But you have to make time to, to be married, to, be, to, 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 to have those breaks, to get away from it. And it doesn't make you a bad parent to, 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 to take those breaks. No. They're important. And, and luckily, I mean, not to brag, but we're 16 years in, you know? Like, yeah. I, we've been together a very long time, and it took, uh, it took, obviously, sacrifice for the family, but put each other first, at least sometimes, yeah. you know? Yeah, well, you, yeah, I say this all the time. I mean, there's a reason they tell you on a plane to put your mask on yourself first before you put it on your child, Ooh. because if you're not alive, your child is worthless. That's great. They're not gonna make it without you. So if you're not taking the time for yourself and giving yourself the oxygen that you need to to be the best version of yourself, your child is not going to excel. Sure. They're just not. Because they're gonna see a parent who's half of what they could be, in my opinion. Sure, no, I, I don't disagree with you at yeah. all. And, and you know, I know everyone's like, you know, <laughs> all right, get to the Star Wars stuff. Let the family. But I'm just, I, I was so excited for you. Thank you. Uh, you know, I've been following you a while and uh, I, I'm, I tell my wife all the time, I'm really sad that we're past that phase in our life. Like, we're not going to have a newborn anymore. Well, you think that. No, well, <laughs> we can't now. Okay, all right. right. <laughs> hint, hint. Uh, uh, <laughs> we can't anymore. But, uh, but I, I am genuinely sad that, uh, that, that that phase is over. And mm. I, when we started over after the, the two oldest, the two, older, the two oldest were such an important part of our beginning of our marriage, yeah. of our beginning of our relationship that uh, I remember, I don't know who said it, Jordan Peterson or someone, but there was like this, this quote that basically was like, there's, a, there's gonna come a day where you set your child down and you never pick them back up again. And you, don't, and you, and you never remember when that moment is, because it's all after the fact. And I don't remember when that moment was. Oh my was. God, I'm crying now. I know, I'm trying, don't, are if you, you cry, I'm just, stop. <laughs> but, stop, Katie. But are you like the most, I was watching Ratatouille last night with Robin, and at some point I started <laughs> crying and I looked at him and I went, Oh my God, I'm crying at Ratatouille. And he goes, baby, I just got emotional too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's this moment, something happens where your heart is literally broken open mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's exposed to the world now. And I'm so much more in touch with my emotions than I've ever been, ever. Being a parent, 100% did that. Yeah. I remember the first time my oldest cried at a movie and I'm trying not to cry. You better cut all this out. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, it was Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> I'll never forget. It was Kung Fu Panda, and at the beginning, when he loses his parents, they like die or something. Uh, my 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 daughter must have been five, but it was the first time that my child uh, expressed the emotional intelligence to feel something in a movie. Yeah. And it freaking broke me, man. Yeah. I just bawled like a a baby watching her cry and it yeah. just it kills me so I, I again we'll get to the other stuff but I just I was dying to talk about being a mother because you, all, you also mentioned recently that you talked you've been thinking about is the retirement was that a flipping thing or it wasn't it was tough you know because our daughter's birth was not a normal birth I was able to go back to work immediately um, and I was on a show where it was not an option for me to take time in the middle so we worked out what my schedule was going to look like, and um, I went right back to work. And that was the hardest thing I've ever had to do because I felt like such an awful human. I was like, we wanted this baby so bad, and I'm not there. Right. But everybody, you know, my mother-in-law, so many people were like, you are there. This is what you're doing. You're doing this for your family. It's only two more months. 
you're home every night, you're there every morning, your, your daughter will never know that you weren't here and right. she will know you did it for your family. So that helped, um, but there were days where I was driving to work just like crying my eyes out leaving a two week old going, what am I doing? And I only work 15 minutes away, sure. so they came to work. But like it was tough and I was like, I think this may be that moment. I think I might be done. <laughs> Do you I think still I might feel be that done. way? I feel like there's um, a lot happening. There's. <laughs> I think that there is a part of me that has been doing this for so long that I am ready for simplicity. Oh, sure. And I'm craving that life. And it's great. This is a great phase, too. I always say the yeah. first two years are for mom. Uh, I'm sorry, the first years for mom, the, se the toddler phase is for dad. Right? Oh, yeah. Like, oh, it's the freaking best. <laughs> this, it just the, the, because the first year, it's, she's so attached to you and, and they love you so much. And, and dad is not really relevant in a lot of ways. Yeah. Uh, it's not until they can start reach, reaching for you. Or, you know, I remember the first time I shaved my beard and my daughter cried her eyes out, thought <laughs> I was a stranger. <laughs> like, you, you, they, the, the toddler phase is for dad, right? Oh, that's funny. So, I mean, you definitely, you have time, and, and you're right. I th your mother-in-law is a saint because yeah. uh, she's not going to remember this right now. No. Uh, things are okay. You're, 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 you know, don't beat yourself up. But, um, yeah, it's it's hard. And I, I'm telling you, I, I, you know, I, I don't, I'm a fan, but I don't think I, I'm sympathizing a lot with your posts lately, especially the butt yeah. one earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Between uh, your airline seat getting mixed up and, and you not knowing which end to put a thermometer in. I... Well, it, it occurred to me when I, you know, my daughter has finally started getting colds and we've been putting thermometers up her bum. And it occurred to me at some point, we're going to need a thermometer as adults. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna go to my husband and be like, will you tell me what my temperature is? Cause I can't see it. <laughs> so, so I was like, I'm gonna buy another thermometer. So I bought another thermometer and I thought to myself, don't we mix need, them up. <laughs> don't mix them up. Yeah. I, I said, babe, where's your label maker? And he goes, what are you doing? And I typed it out and I was like, not for butts. <laughs> I remember the, uh, uh, what was that movie, Idiocracy, when he's yes. like, you put this one in your mouth and this one in your mouth. No, 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 you put this one in your butt and this one in your mouth. As I spill Irish whiskey all over myself. But it's true. It's the things that, that you know, it's just, it's just the things that you do as a parent that become so freaking humorous. Um, but at the same time, you know, like we talked about doing things for yourself. I've been working for 30 years to get to the point in my career that I'm at now. I can't possibly walk away without experiencing the opportunities that are coming my way. That was kind of, I mean, it's not my place to offer advice or say what to do, <laughs> what not to do, but I, that's one of the things I was hinting at is I yeah. think that there's a lot of things happening for you right now that uh, a lot of people are very excited for, including yourself. Mm. That it, you know, uh, your your hint on face or on Instagram of potentially retiring, it was like, but what about this? <laughs> what about that? You know, there's all these things that are in development. And speaking of which, uh, I'm going to pester you about a couple which I know you can't possibly talk about, uh, but I'm going to say it anyways. Um, so, <coughs> is that your first sip? It is. It's a uh, hundred proof Irish whiskey, <coughs> Irish single malt whiskey. You told me last time what to do. I did. <laughs> and you didn't do it. And I didn't do it. You've got to take a sip. And, and leave it in your mouth. Leave it in your mouth. Let your mouth adjust. Guys. And if you swallow and, it, and, it, and you breathe fire, that means you swallow too soon. <laughs> I'll be fine. <laughs> I'm fine. Okay. Yeah, my, my tears are also from the whiskey, not, not the kid stuff, I swear. Not Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> I'm telling you, the first time you see your children have emotional intelligence, oh. it'll crush you in the best possible way. Um, okay, I'll take two. All right, so I, you know, I, I'm a Star Wars fan. Uh, obviously, I, I think that that's a lot of people say that, but there, there's levels to that. It's such a complicated universe. I, I, there was one thing I had a question on, and if it's already been answered, we'll just cut it out. Um, I wanted to know, since since my understanding is you're back for season three. Yes. That's been announced. It's been That's announced. Safe, safe. I can finally talk about it. Yes. Um, and 
there's a gap between, uh, uh, you know, obviously the animated series, series is, uh, and Mandalorian, um, where they talk about Bo-Katan having the dark saber and running Mandalore, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, John Carlo Esposito has it. And we flash forward, and she has it. She no longer has it anymore. Correct. So what happened? And, and it, no one knows what happened. And, and, and honestly, in the last, uh, I think it was Boba Fett, uh, the book of Boba Fett, that they talked about how she had it and she screwed it up. She messed up. She did something wrong. She has a cautionary tale. Yes. So as someone who cares so much about this character, mm. did that piss you off? You're like, wait, 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 what? She just, I just, after all this time, I just got it. I'm finally running it. I'm a good guy now. It started off as a bad guy. Uh, misunderstood. Mi mi misunderstood. She was bad. It's fine. It's fine. But uh, I, I, I wondered, as someone who's now you're you're diving in much more in person to this role, mm -hmm. uh, did, were you concerned about the gap? Do you know what happened yet? Is that I mean, you have to tell me. I do know what happened. Okay. I do. But but at first, when you first heard mm -hmm. that there was this gap, did you know at the time? I knew there was a gap. I mean. It, 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 Knowing the character as well as I do, knowing where she was the last time we saw her in in <clears throat> Rebels and Clone Wars, and then seeing Mandalorian and being like, "Do got my dark saber?" Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I knew there was like a very extreme gap, <clears throat> so I I definitely text you know Dave Filoni and was like, "What'd you do to her? What the heck happened?" So. It, I'm just excited. I'm yeah, excited yeah. for everyone to see. So you know, okay, so it's I, a character that's that's had a ton of growth, in my opinion. Insane growth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, don't get me wrong. If I'm being honest, I, I, there's so far into Obi Wan, people are a little disappointed. <laughs> and some people, you can't please everybody for sure. No, of course not. But but this 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 man that was, I mean, it was so beautiful that final fight in Episode Three. And then all of a sudden he gets confronted with Dar Darth Vader again, and you're, spoiler alert, uh, you're so excited to see this standoff again, and he, and he just uh, is impotent. So it, it's, it, you know, I, I'm hoping that that retribution comes full, full circle, so. <laughs> I think, in my opinion, I don't know, I'm just a fan watching Obi-Wan. They're setting up for it to be. You know what I mean? And that's what you hope, right? You it's hope. right there, right? You hope. And and that is the, the greatest hope of anyone who's writing a show and then the people that are creating a show, that, that you hope there's a payoff for people. You hope that they follow you on this journey and it actually is worthwhile to them and they feel, you know, <clears throat> like they didn't waste eight hours of their life. You know what I mean? I, I am excited. I, I, I know that, I think you hinted the last time you were on the show, that uh, Bo-Katan was, was going to be expounded on in some way. Uh, I think there's hopes in, uh, and she actually told me off air, y'all don't know this, but she's actually uh, a force user. It's not been released yet. Uh, <laughs> Could you imagine? Uh, I mean, yeah, well, there was one other one, right? My like, there phone's was, gonna start dinging. Yeah, Disney yeah. is gonna be like, what did you do? Yeah, if that's true, wink now, we'll cut it out. <laughs> no, uh, no, she didn't say any of that. But no, uh, and from my understanding, again, I was looking into Bo-Katan's history, but there was yeah. one, one Mandalorian that actually we used the force. Yes, he used the force. Uh -huh. So, uh, and and I, if I had to say who's the people champ right now, it's between you and Din, Din Djarin. Is mm -hmm. that how you pronounce it? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, both both of you are super well loved, uh, and I think there's a lot of like real potential in what happens next. So there's a lot of risk to where they go next. I'm, I'm pulling you know. another one real quick. Um, all right. So I noticed that you can you talk about what voiceover film you're working on. Can you even say what it is? You, you, I don't know. You made a post. Mm -hmm. I did. Yeah, that you were working on a voiceover something or other. Dark. Oh? Dark. It's a sk something dark Voice and animated? Voiceover and animated. Okay. And dark. And dark. Mm -hmm. Voiceover and animated and dark. Mm -hmm. Not Star Wars related. Mm -mm. Yeah, so mm -mm. you can't say anything else. Mm -mm. Okay. <laughs> mm -mm. I did my job, I asked. It's a, it's a, it's a beloved graphic novel. Oh, that is all I'm gonna give you. That's plenty. <laughs> a beloved graphic novel, um, animated. And okay. it's fun. <clears throat> I love voiceover work. You know, it, it, I tell all actors to do voiceover work. You know, I think so many times that young actors get into the business and they think that a, a certain medium is beneath them, but it all builds a better, well-rounded, you know, sort of 
chest of arsenal of, of skills. Of talent. I learn different things when I'm doing voiceover, how to use my voice, how to do things, how to change my the inflection of my voice to do something and not have my face move. So you can use that then on camera and it, it lends something to a character if your face isn't moving but your voice says something, that's huge. You learn that kind of stuff in voiceover work. Well, you, you're very expressive, so I would imagine that that is probably a really intense thing mm. to, to pull off. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Doug Jones, uh, one of my all-time favorite. Uh, would you call him a character actor? Uh, I would say yes, yeah, in yeah. my opinion, yeah. Uh, the man has, has built a name be, beyond his face, right? Like, his entire career is this iconic, historical, fantastic roles. And, and the best makeup you've ever seen, visual effects that, that you know, uh, Star Trek Discovery. I mean, I've, I remember when I realized that he was also in, um, what was that movie with the three witches in the 90s that everyone watched? Hocus Pocus. Oh, Hocus Pocus. It was They're Hocus making po a new one. They are. <laughs> And, and he's like, if you look him up on Instagram, he's like 65 years old. And he looks amazing. He's ripped to the bones. Uh, yeah, but he built an entire career beyond, you know, just his face. I think it's smart. I think that it, it, in order to create longevity in this business, which is the goal, you have to diversify yourself. And if you don't, you're, you're constantly just leaning on, you know, other people to give you a job in the one thing that they know that you can do. Yeah, and you don't want to be, uh, what do you call it, pigeonholed in this industry? Not really. I mean, to a certain extent, yes. Being pigeonholed is actually, in my opinion, not a bad thing. You know, you, you do one thing so well that you get hired to do it over and over and over again until you have the power to make them let you do something else. It's a different way to go about it, but it still, you know, in my opinion, you know, gives you the same result, end result, potentially. Well... Um, I can't thank you enough for doing this. It's been absolutely fun. You don't have to leave right now. We can finish our pours. But I want to be respectful of your time. It's been a long day, and you've got Father's Day. I, you're, my Father's Day is Sunday, I'm, I'm, and I'm not flying back tomorrow. I'm going to try to drive home at like 5 a.m. Okay. Uh, but uh, I have Father's Day all planned. You, well, you guys are newlyweds. You're still doing big stuff, right? I mean, to, yes, no, to sir. I mean... I had this like really cool idea, Is this and this isn't gonna come out, so he'll already have experienced sure. it. <clears throat> I um, I wanted to go. My husband barbecues, so I wanted to take my daughter to paint a tray for him and get it like, like, like fired, so sure. he could use it. And I was like, how fun! I'm gonna just take her and let her just like do whatever the heck she wants. She's six months old. It's not gonna be pretty, but it'll be really cute, right? <clears throat> and then I was like. I should actually take him to do that because then it'll like actually it'll be a mean something to him. Right. So I have this like cute little outfit I got for her on Etsy that's like a little tutu that says Daddy's First Father's Day and like a little headband and like some gold glitter shoes. And we're, I'm just going to take them to color me mine and let the two of them go crazy on this thing. And it'll be more fun. So I'm excited. Uh, I told my wife that I, I don't want to leave the bed. Like I just want to sit and watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> and if if she could make me some garlic mashed potatoes, that'd be nice. That's how deep That's what happens a, after 16 years. That's, that's how deep in the follow <laughs> I just want to be left alone. Yeah. For Mother's Day this year, she said, I just don't want to do anything I do every day. So oh, yeah. so we uh, we stayed home and I uh, ordered, I didn't cook. I ordered in all well, of listen, the meals. Breakfast, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Because I can't cook. I've tried okay. to cook. I can't cook. Uh, but I ordered all of the meals, and then she just got to, to... And then we, you know, foot rubs and back massages and, and bottles of wine and that sort of thing. But but it was just like, at this point, we just want a, a non-stressful day, you know? It's true. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. I, I, yeah. The best thing that we ever did, because we actually sleep. I, I don't know how Not old recently. <laughs> well, no, we do. So our daughter brilliantly sleeps through the night. She sleeps 12 hours every night. Oh, man. Because there's this woman on Instagram that, like, I hate people that give mom advice. I'm not giving you mom advice. I swear to crime any I'm not. But if I were ever to give you mom advice and you have a hard sleeper. You're giving me mom advice and I'm asking there is, for it. There is a woman on Instagram taking Kara babies. Like, her name is Kara. This woman 
is a genius. And every time we get to a point where our daughter stops sleeping through the night or she gets to like a leap or something, we watch one of her sleep studies or sleep courses. And within a day, our daughter's sleeping all the way through the night again. She is, um, she just knows and she makes it things so easy and like explains it to you, why your baby's crying, what they want, things like, you know, we learned that when they get to a certain age, you don't need to feed them at night anymore. Like the fact that you're feeding them at night is actually just... Your own schedule. Yeah, so you need to stop. They'll make it, they'll be fine. It's 12 hours, they're okay. Um, little things like that where we're like, oh my God, game changer. Um, and so the trick though is that now we need to go to bed at 6.30. <laughs> to get 12 hours of sleep <laughs> instead of midnight and then wake up at six. If there's, and if there's, if I were to give dad advice, <laughs> and I'm not giving dad advice, uh, if there is one thing that uh, I will say I think is the best thing we've done as parents, and it's it's the best thing that 80s parents did, was latchkey kids. Latchkey kids, amazing. People yeah. used to make fun of latchkey kids. During the school it. year, my wife has to get up super early, take the kids to school, because I'm, I'm at work. Mm -hmm. Uh, and during the summer, mommy gets to sleep in, and nothing really changes. Yeah. The, the kids will get up on their own, five, yeah. five and six, they get up on their own, they go to the living room, uh, the, the six-year-old can pour her, her and her brother a bowl of cereal. They, they'll, they'll, they don't need anything. Yeah. They're completely self-sufficient, and mom can sleep in. To, there's been a couple exhausting days where mom slept into 10. Amazing. I'm like, absolutely, enjoy it. Amazing. You know, you know during the school year, it's it's hard. Yeah. It's, it sucks. Yeah. Uh, and God forbid if you've got kids in one in high, you know, high school and, and elementary. Yeah. So. Um, all right. Uh, enough parent talk. Uh, I, thanks for coming <laughs> to do this. Uh, thanks so much for your time. And oh, it was really you. nice to see you again. Oh, so nice to see you. Cheers.